Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier, and this one's exciting. I'm pleased to finally present and review the modular Simrig system that's been teased by Monster Tech for over one year. Those of you that have seen their parts in person can appreciate their design, fit, and finish. Efforts were made to ensure a fully adjustable system, resulting in a truly ergonomic product. The new range of MTX products complement and are compatible with the existing desk series. And looking at the initial range of available options, it's very obvious that community feedback was taken into consideration. Nothing they make ever flexes, even when forced, and their systems can be disassembled or adjusted easily. I've always really liked their minimalist industrial look, and now having seen this in person, the MTX system looks awesome. I was sent this prototype to assemble, test, and make critical suggestions for final release. I've now had it for over a month, taking notes for this review series, and I feel confident that I didn't miss anything, so let's begin. The MTX system revolves around a base which holds the chair and the adjustable pedal mount. With that base, there are 15 optional kits which can be combined to provide a solid space sim, flight sim, road sim, and FPS experience. It's also ready to be configured for support to single and triple monitors, or blank for use with VR. As future features are needed, the system's modular, and it's ready. Unlike a pure flight sim like DCS, Star Citizen presented Monster Tech a unique issue. Players need to transition between a mixture of both flight and FPS. Over the last year in messages back and forth, I watched as prototypes that worked very well were evaluated and optimized even further. For example, even in this last month, adjustments were being made to the prototype parts that I had to improve the final production product. The shipping from Germany to Canada took about a week. The two boxes were a little bit beat up, but all the parts arrived without damage thanks to being fully isolated internally with thick cardboard panels and blocks. I placed the boxes in a well-lit area close to where I planned to use it. I removed and inspected all the parts, checking the packages to make sure I didn't miss anything. The manual's a PDF that I had on my laptop for reference. I collected the basic tools that I needed for the install. A tape measure is going to help you identify the parts, an Allen wrench set with a ball end, and a 10mm wrench to help secure and adjust the rubber feet. Monster Tech sent me their optional Allen wrench set, plus the aluminum tube to help me apply more force if needed. The specific sizes I used were 4, 5, and 6mm. They do offer chairs on their website, however I ordered my chair locally. I did this two weeks before everything else arrived because it was going to be much cheaper than shipping one from Germany to Canada. The sim base can mount any racing style automotive seat, either directly or mounted to a slider. I sourced a chair slider for $40 which sits between the base and the chair, giving 30 centimeters of adjustment. The slider is not a requirement, however not everyone's built the same and it was important to me to be able to adjust for taller or shorter friends who just wanted to test it out. In the future, I plan to test to see if a DX Racer gaming chair can also bolt up, and you should also not forget your local scrapyard. That option might require some fabrication, but it could actually reduce the cost. The common seat brands are Recaro, Sparco, Momo, and Bride. The energy seat that I chose happened to be on 75% clearout discount when scanning Amazon. At $150 shipped, the price was one quarter most of the other options. It was way too good of a deal to pass up, and my plan is to replace it if it fails. When choosing the chair, consider that the shape of the side bolsters might work well in a seated position, but could actually limit your range of motion when using a joystick. Assembling the base is very easy, and I'll take you through the process. Step one is to lay out the main frame. This is two large square 450mm lengths and three rectangular 185mm laterals. The three laterals are very easy to identify because they have mounting ports on opposite sides. Install six M8 slide nuts into the two channels on both pieces. Loosely thread the M8 bolt and keeper into the nut and slide them approximately where needed. Install the three laterals, one fully flush with the back, one approximately where the front of the seat would be, and one three quarters of the way down. You can fully tighten the rear one, however it's important to leave the others slightly snug. You're going to need to adjust them pretty soon. At this time, I chose to install the rubber feet. Ensure the order is foot, nut, then washer. Slide an M8 nut into each of the four corners and then tighten the foot until it bottoms out. Snug the nut to make it tight. In the future, you have a lot of adjustment room to level the base to the floor. Next, it's time to assemble the two rails that make up half the chair support. Find two 400 millimeter lengths and with an M8 nut, install one short riser block on each end. Attach them to the rear and mid-lateral support by adjusting the mid-lateral's position. 
Before really tightening everything down, install two 395mm pieces and adjust everything square. The chair slide is next. You can elect to skip this part and mount the chair directly to the base. I found it easier to attach the slider to the chair and then to the base. To get everything to work properly, I did have to loosen and adjust everything several times. Once you're happy, tighten everything down. Now it's time to assemble the pedal support. This piece is fully adjustable from any angle between practically flat and practically vertical. Attach the hinges onto the two 360mm parts by finding the threaded end and bolting them together. You'll need to place some lock keys to prevent rotation. Install the 550mm lengths next. The one closest to the end gets fully tightened, and you can leave the lower one snug as it's going to need to move for the next step. Install the four angle brackets, which you can use to attach the pedals. You may need to loosen and adjust to get the right fit. Once you're happy, using the M8 slide nuts and cap screws, secure the hinges onto the sim base. Next, you're gonna to need to attach the two support arms. Ensure these have washers, set an initial angle, and then tighten. Test and adjust everything until you're comfortable. It's at this time that you'd further customize your sim base with further optional kits. All the kits can be seen on the website, and please stay tuned because I've prepared more content that details many other popular uses. So with all that, I hope you see the benefit of having your own modular sim pit. Many of you know that I stand to play Star Citizen, but Monster Tech might actually just convert me. Monster Tech has put an excessive focus on structure and rigidity. The base and the modules are so overly engineered that even during the most vigorous gaming, the sim base and the components will take it and be ready for more. In the next video, I'm going to show you the current configuration. VR Road Sim, I'll assemble it, test it, and then give you my thoughts. Monster Tech loves the community, so I've been asked to mention a promo code Nubifier, which will get you a further 10% discount at checkout. This is a very exciting product. Monster Tech has invested a ton of R&D to ensure perfect fit and finish on a solid foundation, which resists flex. It's beautiful, functional, and it's become the centerpiece of my basement studio. Thank you very much for spending your time with me, and thank you to Monster Tech for offering me an opportunity to test this for you. Please stay tuned for more. Fly safe, and I'll see you in the verse.